Greetings and welcome to the seventh video in this series. Uh, we started out building uh, a little champ chassis, then we built a cabinet, and now we're upholstering the cabinet. I think I know now how Tolstoy must have felt uh, after he started War and Peace. Uh, it's quite an epic undertaking to document all steps in the creation of a little amp like this. Uh, but this is the last chapter, so let's get started. Okay, before we start, let's discuss a little uh, upholstery theory here. There's two ways to cover a small cabinet like this. One way is actually to uh, start here and wrap the entire cabinet in one piece of vinyl or Tolex and then work on the corners. And that may seem like the easiest method, but in reality, a, an easier method is to start right here and wrap this side all the way down to about here, and then this side all the way around and about to here, and then do a wrap over the top and the bottom in which we overlap the ends of the side upholstery. So, given the choice between two styles of covering the cabinet, the full wrap or the four-piece wrap, I'm going to go with the four-piece uh, because it's a little simpler uh, for those just starting out, and it's also exactly how Fender did their cabinets, both Tolex and Tweed. It's 45 degrees in the workshop, and time to get started. Well, Rusty, are you ready to upholster this cabinet? Rusty? Are you going to help me upholster the cabinet? I guess not. Step one is to figure out the width of the material that we're going to use. And um, I'll tell you, using a measuring tape or ruler, it's almost impossible to uh, accurately measure all these turns and bends. So the way I do it is I start a piece of masking tape right here where the edge of the material will end up. And I wrap the masking tape tightly around the cabinet, bringing it in here and ending right at this edge. Then pull off a piece of masking tape, stick it down on a flat surface and measure it. And it appears that it's about a 12 and 1 quarter inches from this point all the way around to the same point on the back. Let's add a half inch to either end to give us a little leeway so that the material will protrude out a ways here and we can run a razor blade down this edge and make for nice sharp edges front and back. So adding one inch to twelve and a quarter gives us thirteen and one quarter inches for the width of our side piece. Thirteen and one quarter. Now for the length of the side pieces, we're going to have about a one and a half inch overlap at the top and at the bottom. So that's three inches and um, this is fourteen and a half, so it'll be uh, seventeen and a half inches from here down to here. Now for the top and bottom, the piece will be exactly 12 inches wide by the same 13 and 1 quarter wraparound width as the sides. So it's 12 by 13 and a quarter. Then just to play it safe I suggest you go back and measure one more time. Remember the old adage, measure twice and cut once. Uh, Okay, once you've settled on your final dimensions, I write them down on a piece of paper like this. Since all your edges have to be exactly square, um, I lay the big square down on my material and then trim off the edges so that the outer edge of the material is a perfect right angle with good straight clean edges. Now using your large square Draw out your cutting lines to show exactly where your pieces need to be cut uh, for the two sides, for the bottom, and for the top. Then before you start cutting on these lines, go back and double check your measurements. Make sure that they're exactly right and that all your angles are exact right angles. Then once you're sure that your measurements and lines are perfect, Get a fresh, brand new, single edge razor blade 
and cut along the lines to create your four separate upholstering pieces. Now if you've done everything right you have your top, your bottom, and your left and right sides. Corners are perfectly square, sides are straight as an arrow, dimensions are all exactly right. If that's not the case, I guess uh, you'll be heading back down to the material store to buy some more. Don't feel bad, it happens to the best of us. Uh, but for those of us who uh, actually did uh, make proper cuts and have uh, correct size pieces, uh, let's continue. Now using a square, uh, run it over the side like this and find a spot one and one half inches in from this edge. Find it at the front and then find it back here at the rear. Then we'll draw a line between the dots. Okay, so here we have our one and a half inch line. This will be the starting line for the side wrap. Let's do another one over here and then let's do it on the bottom also. Now besides our starting line here, find the center of the cabinet and draw a line through your starting line so that we not only have the starting line but we know where the center of it is right there. Next find the exact center of the width of your material. Put a piece of masking tape there and mark the exact center of the width. Now the reason for these lines is this. After I've applied glue to this and to the back of the material, I intend to start it like this. As you can see, this way, when the center line of the material matches the center line of the cabinet, I know that my distances over here on the sides are going to be exactly the same. So I'll get the same wrap when I bring it around and inside the cabinet. Not only that, if this leading edge aligns with that line perfectly, then I know that my wrap is started square and that it is started at exactly the right position on the cabinet. Okay, now after warming the glue in a hot water bath, I'm going to start applying it all along this surface, around the side, and down probably two or three inches. And I'm going to stop about here. I'm also going to apply the glue inside both to this surface and underneath all the way around the cabinet. Okay, inside, underneath, and from about here to here. Now after force drying with a hair dryer, I have a band of glue that goes past my starting line, wraps around, comes down probably say two and a half, three inches on the side, and then there's nothing, no glue at all on this side. I'm going to lay the cabinet on the table from here down so we don't want any glue here. Okay, and a nice two thick uh, coats inside here and inside here. All of this will make sense quite soon. Next, using heated spray glue, shake it up well and we're going to spray a heavy coat over every square inch of the back of side one. And be sure you get the edges. That's where it's going to lift. If it does lift, that's where it'll happen. So be sure you get a nice heavy coat of your spray glue around the edges. Now with your uh, cabinet laying on the table with the glued part overhanging and not touching anything, as I showed you previously, we align our side piece centered here and exactly matching the guideline that we drew. Okay, we're not going to wrap it around yet. We just be sure that it sticks really well here to the top of the cabinet. Now, after using the linoleum roller to secure the uh, material to the top of the cabinet, uh, lift the cabinet up and lift the material away so it doesn't touch the side fold it over the top out of harm's way and now we're going to apply two heavy coats to the remainder of the cabinet here and underneath into the line that we drew about one and a half or so in on the bottom. 
Now we have two heavy coats on the side all the way down and around maybe two inches uh, underneath. Uh, also a little hint when you're applying the glue it's kind of nice to do one coat in one direction and the second coat in a in the uh, 90 degree opposed direction. Okay so everything is heavily glued here inside here edges underneath and this side. Now we're going to slowly roll this down flattening it with our hand as we go and roll it down and smoothly attach it to the side of the cabinet. Hopefully now you're at this stage. Don't roll these around yet, but uh, do the linoleum roller on the side and make sure it fits flat and that your bottom curves around and is attached. It goes smoothly around the uh, curvatures where your box joints are and make sure this is perfectly flat before we proceed. Now this is where the artistry begins. Uh, at this curved side where your box joint is, go out to the center of that curvature and to the end of it where the material just starts to lift off of the edge and come out. Take a single edge razor blade, start right at that point and make a slit out that is perpendicular to the edge of the material. And you're going to end up with this. So now once we've slid up here, we're in, uh, we have this uh, configuration and we're going to take this piece, pull as tight as we can and fold it over and in, sticking it right here and then along the top. Then using this edge as your guide, cut your material with a uh, single edge razor blade all the way up here, then continue the cut up to the edge and remove that rectangle. So here we are now with this flap loose and the top and bottom edges round around and they've been cut off straight. Now we're going to set this flap down like so. We're going to press it firmly around the curvature and we're going to cut straight lines from here and here until they meet this corner right here where the side begins. Okay now we have the flap loose like this and we're going to bend it down and across so that it conforms to these surfaces. There's a right angle down here where the cleat meets the wall of the side of the cabinet. We want to use our putty knives to force the material to conform exactly to that right angle. So we want the material to go straight down to the right angle and then straight out. Now if your cleat doesn't go all the way to the bottom, like and this is at the rear of the cabinet, um, make your cut right along this edge and push that material down so that it goes down smoothly. Then where the cleat is we're going to take our razor blade and cut right along this edge so that we end up with a perfect straight edge along the edge of our cleat all the way up here and then we'll cut down to meet it. And here's where we end up uh, on the back. Um, the piece went in flat. This came up here. I took my blade and cut along smoothly and now we're going to address these corners. This one, the inside corner and the outside corner. Now you have to be real careful here. But remember where you started your cut in this direction, go to that point and make a 45 degree cut down here to where the flap has, has been cut away from the rest of the material. So we're going to have a 45 degree miter joint from the origin of this cut to the origin of this. Now that I made the cut, I remove the outer triangle, lift up the material here in the corner, get some needle nose pliers and remove that lower triangle down there. Now if you followed all the directions and uh, with a little bit of luck you're going to end up with a perfect miter joint here that's almost invisible and to be honest much better than what Fender does. Okay it comes around here and where it comes down I made another 45 degree cut. I just continued that 45 all the way. So here's my uh, present situation on this corner now I'm going to go do the other corner and then I'll do the front corners.
You know, it's best if you start at the rear on these to practice. You've got eight of them. Why don't you do the, the two rear ones first to kind of get your technique down and then do the front ones. Okay, I'll show you once more here. Uh, this is the, that was the one I just finished. So now I'm down here, I make my 45 degree cut, I remove the top triangle, I lift up the material, I go in with needle nose pliers and I remove that lower triangle down there. There, once I pull out the triangle, then I pull on the material, put it back where it was, and after I trim like a little thread here, I have another virtually invisible corner. And there we have it. That's the second corner. Just about invisible. And like I said, if you go look at a Fender amp, they usually just fold it over here. Uh, this is a whole lot better looking, I think. If you can master this type of corner, you can really make some nice cabinets. Okay, uh, this part's done. And here's the front corners. They came out real nice. Uh, since the cleat is full length for the speaker baffle, there was no cutting and laying material down flat. It just goes uh, the full length on the cleat and then just take the blade and cut along the edge so that you have a really nice recess here for the speaker baffle. Well, here's the cabinet side out in the sun and you can see the joints look good, uh, corners, everything looks fine and now all you have to do is make the left side look like the right side. Okay, here's the cabinet done on both sides and just to make you feel better, this is by far the hardest part. The rest is, is really much easier. Um, Rusty's contract uh, that his agent worked out requires now that I take a few minutes to go play ball with him and then we'll continue with the rest of the upholstery work. Oh. Rusty, are you ready to get back to work? Now, refreshed from our ball game, it's time to get back to work. Uh, we're going to apply masking tape uh, where the inside edge of the masking tape matches this edge of the cabinet all the way around and matches it back here. The reason being, we're going to apply contact cement actually to the leather here where we uh, overlap it. Okay, so we're going to be applying uh, two heavy coats to the wood and one coat to the leather all the way around inside here and on this surface right here, front and back. Um, then find the center point on that piece of masking tape that masks off the uh, outside of the leather and find the center point of the side of the piece that's going to wrap around, in this case, the bottom of the cabinet. Then apply two heavy coats uh, of contact cement to about two-thirds of the bottom, uh, one coat to the uh, vinyl or a Tolex material, and be sure that you come all the way around in and fully coat underneath here and this wall. Apply a heavy coat of that uh, spray contact cement to the rear of the bottom uh, square. Then with the uh, top covering material folded up like wings, line up the center tapes on either side and then gently lay down the piece uh, that's coming your way onto the contact cement. And be sure that when it gets to the edge here, it lines up exactly with the side of the cabinet. 
Now keep the wing that was going to be in contact with the unglued wood, keep it folded over and now we're going to apply our two coats of contact cement here and underneath on the floor far enough in to hold this edge flat. Then after your second coat of glue has dried on the remainder of the, of the bottom, we're going to roll the material around and inside and onto the floor of the cabinet. Then at the rear of the floor of the cabinet, we just bring the material around, lay it down flat, make sure our corners are sharp, and we're done. Now we'll go to the front. At the front of the floor, we end up with this flap that we pull really hard and then using our putty knife we're going to push it down just like we did on the on the sides down into this uh, 90 degree angle and have it come where it'll overlap a little bit up here and then we're going to trim it off. Be sure to use your putty knife to push the material into that inside corner. Okay, after we brought the material in and up, we'll take a really sharp razor blade and trim it off uh, with a nice clean edge. Then we'll take the same razor blade and do the miter corners here to uh, coincide with the 45 degree angle that was cut into this piece and this piece. Okay, there you see the 45 degree cut at each end, making a nice miter corner and then the nice clean edge that it has um, on the cleat. Okay, here's the bottom all finished and uh, next we'll remove the tape and then use the linoleum roller with a lot of pressure to push this down uh, really tight. Uh, so here's the floor. You'll see the little indentation here where the overlapping ceases. Uh, nice wrap around here perfectly flat, nice corners. This is what you want, okay? If you followed all the little steps, I think you should end up with something that looks sort of like this. Doing the top will be exactly the same procedure, except you will have two cleats to cover uh, instead of just one like you did on the floor. Well, here's the finished product. Uh, when I put it together, I didn't care for the chrome hardware, so I redid it in a gold finish. Uh, then I'll go to a handheld camera here for some details. The uh, old style handle with the gold hardware, grill cloth, gold hardware on the back door, there's the chassis. All in all, I think considering what this was built from, which is a bunch of junk parts, I think it really turned out pretty nice. I'm real proud of it. I hope you like it. Let's take a few seconds here for a quick tune and then we'll bring this video series to its conclusion. <laughs> Most of all, I hope that some of you out there having watched this seven video series and soaking up whatever advice and pointers I could give you, uh, that you will be uh, inspired to take up the old soldering iron and build your own amp. I tell you, I've had a lot of hobbies in my life, but uh, this one is, I would say, by far the most challenging and rewarding. In effect, you're building something from nothing. And when you get done, you have something to really be proud of. So to me, that's a win-win situation. Well, on that happy note, I think it's time to bring this rather lengthy saga to a close. 
I really appreciate your time and interest and all the wonderful comments that have been coming in in response to the video. Uh, I hope those of you who haven't subscribed yet will do so. But most of all, I hope that all of you stay happy, stay healthy, and stay tuned. I'll see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.